As I was saying, um, after last night, I understand what it means to be, or eat like, or end up being like a stuffed pig. <laughs> I mean, I, we had a place last night that was just unbelievable. Um, a lot, some of you have seen this before. Anybody that came to the Dalton um, Symposium have seen the two uh, pieces I'm going to do today. One is called a poor man's hollow form. It's called poor man's hollow form because you don't need um, deep hollowing tools to do this piece. I always start off by saying if you've turned two bowls and one of them's got a hole in it, you can do this. Um, uh, giving my props to, I saw Clay Foster back in the 90s. He did this in Texas and I was intrigued by it and I played with it a while. And I think it's only been about, well, five or six years, maybe a little longer now, that I started doing this. Clay did it with plain wood, and he said, you do it with plain wood because it's easier to line up the grain. I found out, I got a piece of uh, ambrosia maple one day and did it, and I like lining up those lines. What happens is we turn a kind of a squat or tall um, outside of a, a vessel and cut it in half. Put tatted on both ends, but we cut it in half. Then we can use the bowl gouge to hollow it out. Um, I've had people uh, send me pictures of work they've done. I've had one guy, he cut it, and he had a fairly tall one, but he cut it out in three pieces. It looked really nice. So if you do nothing else, I got my card up here. Um, if you do this and you do whatever, if, if even it's not unusual, even if it's exactly like mine. Send me a picture of what you did. I like that. But if people take the time to send a picture, I know that they, it, it interests them and it'll keep me doing it or doing something similar to it. Um, let's see. That I'm going to do. And then later on, I've got another project. And I, another one that's called a log to a bowl, is what we, which what we did yesterday. And we're going to take a log and show you how to process that log and why I do wet wood and wait for it to dry, then turn it to conclude, because it's a lot cheaper. Okay, we'll go through that. And then, I think that's going to take us through today. We we'll go to one o'clock, you say? Not right. One, two? One, two, one. three, four, okay. something like that. Now, I always have, I always have one other little project at the end, just in case. There are days when the cutting goes right and everything just goes smoothly, and you don't want to uh, cut people short. So I've got one other little project, my little, uh, cube. It, people call it a three-cornered bowl, but it's not. Okay. It's it's a, a three-cornered box, but it's not yeah. a box of three-cornered bowl. And we'll get it if we can get into that. If you got questions, yell them out. Um, anything else? Okay. Okay. I've got a piece of ambrosia maple here. Um, what first thing I want to do is just make it round. Dry or wet, Frank? It's wet, but not as wet as I want it to be. It's just a lot, a lot easier to. Uh, what happened to the lights back here? Just using a roughing out. Before I, then I start by shaking at the top and the bottom, put a, a finial on the top, not a finial, but a, um, a tenon on the top and the bottom because I've, in two pieces I've got to be able to hold it in a chuck both ways, so I glue it together. He's going to get a light, because you can't see the tool.
Raphael gouge I'm using it happens to be a Carter um, with that without their handle look one inch I like it it's like the new ones that David showed you a couple months ago like over there on the wall it's got the aluminum handle Who's the cleanup guy today? I just want to apologize in advance. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> inch a bow gouge which is kind of my favorite tool for everything that's not spindle work when you're turning one of the things you want to do no matter how sure you are of the piece of wood or you're turning, stop occasionally, take a look and see whether the thing is about to come apart on you. taking a look and see which end I want to be the bottom or the top I think I'm going to make this the top So I'll make a tenon. Gonna fit that shut. Good 
Allen shut, so I'm looking for straight sides to 90 degree corner in here. because I want it to sit flat on the jaws, deep enough so it goes down but not touch the bottom. If it touches the bottom, it's not a true center, but you want to sit. Can you sit? Be good. Flat on the jaws, all you want it small enough so that all the teeth with this just about closed will bite into the wood. Okay. That's good there. the grocery store, right? You've used to something to change it on you. Well, <laughs> see, I've got the old power man. Yeah. Okay. Got to do the same thing. This end, I think this is going to be the bottom. So I need to put a tenon down there. Flattening the bottom, come back, start the place for my tenon. saving this wood for you guys for a couple months now and I painted the ends real good and it's not as wet as I normally would but it's going to work out. Three corner in there because I am going to use that chuck and the tenon is a little bit longer, deeper than I want, so I part of it off. Make it smart enough so it goes down in the little hole there. Take a look and see what I've got. I 
me take a little more off the side so I get some of the markings in there. This is going to be the top, that's going to be the bottom. Three eighths inch ball rods again. I've already asked, had some people ask me about this particular tool. Gotcha. It's a it's a Carter tool, and it's a, started out as a spindle gouge, but it's shaped like those of you have been around a long time. You know, you know, a kind of gouge which was very shallow, and this is a halfway between a spindle gouge and um, the old kind of old gouge. But it's nice when you got working on a big surface. Works like a spindle gouge, but you get a little more cutting area going at the time. Let's see. The guys that were here yesterday, I told the story to one person at the end, but I usually start off my classes, I teach classes private lessons and everything, but I also teach about five classes a month in woodcraft. And I usually start off by saying, I have to tell you this story because later on if I make mention of it, if I say what I'm going to say, you'll think I've lost my mind. And we all do it. What happens is, I said, I had a friend of mine who turned a bear for me out of a piece of walnut. I asked him, like, how'd you do that? He said, I just carved away what was not the bear. So I tell folks, when they're turning, I said, somewhere during the day, you're going to say, well, is that thin enough? Or uh, should I take some more off? And I'm going to tell you, take away what's not your bear. And that's what I'm doing now, taking away what's not a part of this little vessel that I want to try to turn. Let's see if my markings are coming in. Yeah, the markings will start to come in. Coming down the side, a little bit smaller. I did say this is going to be the top, right? This is a good time to practice um, cutting techniques. You've got a big area and you've got room to make mistakes. Whenever you're cutting, try to make your cuts as smooth as possible, pretending that each cut is your last cut. Then when you get down to your last cut, you don't have to practice because you've been doing it all along. Tighter 
trying to find my bearings. He feels like a part of the show with a little stuff in there. There's some nice little color in here. Let's get this neck down a little bit. He adds a little fiber to his diet. <laughs> I'm turning a little faster than I normally turn. Because, not in memory, but one of our students yesterday politely said that they, and I use you know, this, I say they, said they turn fast. And, uh, so I decided to speed up a little bit my my revolution here in their honor. <laughs> we did have some things go flying yesterday. <laughs> Everybody did get out of here with two bows, though, and that's the important thing. Okay. Let's look at our shape. Okay. It's getting there. Yeah. Okay. I got a white. See you, That's Ambrose. This neck is not going to end up being that big, make it small, but I'm leaving the meat there now because I'm going to have it hung out, trying to shape it in the end. I need the mass there. an opportunity to practice with the left hand without a lot of worry about things going wrong. Anytime you get a chance, do that so that when you, there's a situation you have to turn do it with your left hand, you can. This is going to be the foot. Probably less than half of that's going to be on the end. I left the thickness there.
guys any some fancy What's on the sink in the bathroom? What's that? Oh, good. 